Welcome to another episode of Discipleology, a podcast where we talk about all things discipleship. Today, we have a new topic on forgiveness. Mary and Chris, forgiveness, it seems so easy and it is so hard for me to do uh, or to do well or to do authentically, maybe. Uh, Ephesians 4 Verse 32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God has also forgiven you. Um, we've got Matthew 6, 14, forgive others, and Jesus will also forgive you. Colossians 3, 13, bear with each other and forgive. Why is forgiveness so, so hard to do well? Can I say something at the beginning of this? Please. Because I think this is a great topic to start with. In a previous episode, we were in a kitchen setting. And uh, you had promised me that you would make me a grilled cheese sandwich. I don't know that I promised you. I, I think it was in the writer that I gave you at a time. <laughs> but we were standing there and you did not make me a grilled cheese. So I forgive you. Oh, thank you, Chris. Just thought I'd start with that. <laughs> Are you still harboring resentment that I've still not made you a grilled cheese in this new kitchen? See, does that matter? I, of course it matters. As Are you going to forgive me again in a later episode again? Jesus does say to forgive 70, what is it? 77 times 77 or, I mean, I think, I think you, got, you got a lot of times ahead of you. Okay. I'll spend some time thinking about it, but yeah, no. Forgiveness is hard. Um, you know, there's a saying that hurt people hurt people. And so once you've been hurt and you feel like you have something that's against you, you just want to hurt somebody else. And it just kind of keeps going and going. Uh, Anne Lamott, who's an author, has a, uh, a thing that she wrote that I love that said, uh, holding a grudge against somebody is like eating rat poison and then expecting the other person to die. Mm. Right. So it, holding on to that grudge or whatever that is, we think it's going to make us feel better, but it actually kills us inside. Yeah. Well, I've seen that in my own life for sure. And I see that even with my kids, like, as, as I need to ask their forgiveness often, um, I think we don't allow forgiveness to be enough of a part of our everyday life to where it does feel really hard. It feels abnormal. Um, and yet I think we have enough scriptural basis to say it is something that we're going to face most days. Um, and I have to ask forgiveness from my kids when I when I, you know, raise my voice or when I like am short with them for no real reason. And so I find myself asking forgiveness a lot, um, which I think is a good flip side of like receiving forgiveness too that you're discussing. Hmm. So you're saying that Andrew should ask for my forgiveness um, on the grilled cheese. Uh, no, I think Andrew should receive your forgiveness. Okay. <laughs> Did I receive it well? Um, uh, no, cause you, you looked ahead and thought I would get mad at you about something else. Oh, mm. fair. We do that. Yeah. There was a, a story long ago happened in my life when I was still in high school. Um, I was at a church, some church summer camp and I was tearing down the sound equipment. The camp was over. I was definitely out past curfew. I was in the wrong, right? And a guy came over to our little tent that all of the leaders and me were tearing down the sound system. And he called me over to his car and chewed me out about being out past curfew. And I harbored resentment towards him for easily 15 more years um, to this point where I'm still talking about it. Right. But it's at the point where I'm having forgiven him for what he did, for how he made me feel. But still there's part of me that, thinks about it. And I, the amount of energy that I've wasted, he doesn't know what he did. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know that I'm still thinking about it. Um, and so when I had to forgive him for that, the relief of just the grief and the, the angst came off of me. And it was such a good feeling, um, that now I can go through life and not harbor resentment towards him. How do we forgive and also not think about this? How do we move on in our lives? Man, I think that's a great question. I, I just keep going back to like the amount that I've been forgiven. When we think about modeling Christ as the model of forgiveness for us, as, as the sacrificial gift for us, 
Um, It's hard to harbor resentment when I know how much I've been forgiven. Uh, Now, that's easy to say today while I don't feel like I'm mad at anyone, uh, but I'm sure tomorrow I'll need another reminder. But again, I think we just fix our eyes to Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that we forget. You know, I think that's the hardest part of forgiveness is like restoration within Mm. a relationship. It's very easy to say, I forgive you, but I'm still going to really keep my distance from you mm. uh, rather than saying, no, it's forgiven and you're, you're back in the fold. Like we're, we're good. Um, and, and I think we see that in the church a lot, Chris, what are your thoughts on, on how does that look in small groups? Yeah. You know, you already said hurt people, hurt people. And, and we all are walking into to our church groups with some amount of of hurt, of frustration, of, of things that go on. So how do we do that well in groups? Yeah, it's, it's really tough. I love that you brought up the forgive and forget, because I think that's somewhat a misnomer Yeah. Um, because it's going to, it's going to stay there. I mean, it's not like it just goes out of your brain and you forget, but I, I think it's forgive and grow from this. So we are going to build on a relationship that we already had that is made even better because we have walked through this and forgiven each other. But I've seen in small groups, you know, conflict and all of that can really destroy a group. I mean, I've seen it happen in my groups. I'm not a conflict guy. Uh, I'm not someone that's going to just let's just have it out right here and kind of get it into the clear. I'm like, Oh, you know what? It'll probably get better. And so I've seen that in groups where they sweep it under the rug. If something, you know, there's a tension there. So I think it's important that you, uh, Head it off as soon as possible. So not hoping that it'll just go away. And usually that's not best done in the middle of a group meeting, but setting aside time outside of the group, maybe having a third party um, be a part of it as well. But if you just let that fester and fester, um, it's going to destroy not just that relationship, but I've seen it over and over. It's going to destroy the group. And people are out because of unforgiveness or conflict that wasn't resolved. I see it with um, people that give up on groups. They've had a bad experience. They had somebody hurt them in a group experience or they, they felt like there was a hurt and they never wanted to go back to another small group. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, I love Chick-fil-A. My daughters work at Chick-fil-A. And if they're looking to sponsor somebody, I'm right here. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've had a couple of bad experiences at Chick-fil-A's and they're the best. I mean, if you go, their customer service is unbelievable. And I've had, and it's like me saying, I'm never going to Chick-fil-A again because they messed up on my fries. You know, it's the same way with a small group experience or even a church experience. You may have gotten hurt. You may have had somebody hurt you, but um, it doesn't mean that you need to walk away from it or you should walk away from it. It's a good word. That is a good word. Uh, I am a conflict guy. I am a conflict guy. And I think uh, I have destroyed a lot of relationships. But what I think is the restoration you were talking about, I've also been uh, quick to come back and say, I'm, I'm sorry, let's, let's talk through this. I didn't mean to hurt you. Or people have come to me and said, you really hurt me when you said X, Y, or Z, or while we were debating or whatever. Um, and my intent is not to sever that relationship. My intent is not to hurt them. And so what ends up happening is we actually get closer because of the conflict and because of that restoration that happened, we now are tighter and and we can actually talk through things now. And so it almost feels like it opens communication lines by forgiving. How do we do this yeah. better? Well, that's a great question. Um, I, I think conflict is a part of being a human too. Sure, and so sure. as we acknowledge like, Hey, there's a conflict here. Hey, we need to work this out. We're really just saying like, Hey, I'm, I'm human just like you. And I'm, I'm infall, I'm not infallible. I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, and so I just think owning it and being willing to have those conversations is probably the easiest way to get to a better place when it comes to conflict, when it comes to forgiveness, it seems really trite and easy. Uh, but when you're in the conflict, having the conversation is a lot harder, um, at least for me, I'm one, I'm probably more like you, Chris, where I I would prefer to just ignore it and hope that it goes away and hope that everything's fine. And I just assume like, I'll forget about it. They probably don't feel the way I feel. It's Mm -hmm. fine. Uh, When those moments have come where I have said, Hey, 
I don't, I, I feel like there's some tension here. Have I hurt you? Or, or like, here's where I'm seeing that there was struggle or there was hurt. Uh, I've experienced what you're saying, Andrew, where it's like, it, it becomes a better relationship, a better experience where we're saying like, Hey, we're all in this together. We're trying to sharpen each other and we're going to fail. And this is probably going to happen again. Like we're going to hurt each other by accident again, but I'm in it. Like Mm. I'm in this relationship for the long haul for a purpose. Um, And so I I think forgiveness is really just like an expression of love. Mm. It's an opportunity for us to show Christ's love to others. Well, how cocky is it for us to not forgive somebody, even though Christ has forgiven us already? Right. Right. Uh, there, there's a Spurgeon quote out there somewhere that I'm going to butcher, um, that, that Christ or God loves to forgive more than we love to sin. Right. And so mm-hmm. the amount of yeah. forgiveness that he, uh, is already giving to us outweighs anything that we can do. And so why would we not give that to somebody else? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, wouldn't, wouldn't it be amazing for that to be true of us? Right. Like I want to forgive more than I'm ever going to be wronged. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. Um, and I want to throw this out to you guys too. You know, at the same, you talked about the relationships growing from forgiveness and absolutely and having conflict. But what about a situation where somebody is consistently hurting somebody else mm-hmm. or hurting you just because you forgive doesn't mean that you need to do life with that person, do you yeah. think? It, sometimes I think it's healthy. Let's use a small group. Uh, if there is a small group that you are in, that you have somebody that's consistently hurting you, or it's a hurtful experience, the best thing for that person or for you might be to step out of that small group yeah. and to find a small group that is healthy for you. That's that's a better situation than saying, you know what, I'm just going to forgive and I'm going to grit my teeth and I'm going to get through this. You know, remove yourself from the situation. Yeah, I think there's an important piece of this to reference abuse as well. Like we're not asking uh, forgiveness in the sense of just forgetting major abuse that needs to be dealt with. That need, You need to remove yourself from the situation potentially for your safety, uh, for, your, for the health of, of your relationship with the Lord, for your, your bodily health. Uh, and so there is absolutely, Chris, I'm so glad you brought that up, that there are times where we forgive, but we distance mm. and that, that is, that's okay and that that's right. Yeah. What a great discussion I think that we're having. And so I, I think it's important to realize that forgiveness brings reconciliation, um, brings unity. And if we're trying to do discipleship in all of this, we have to have a baseline of, of forgiving others, right? And so it will make us better in the home. It'll make us better in the church. Uh, it'll make us better as people. So thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Discipleology. If you've not subscribed to Apple Podcasts, we are there. We're on Stitcher. We're on Spotify. But we're also on Facebook and on YouTube that you can watch us live and in person on video. So please uh, subscribe and we thank you so much. We'll see you next week.